to become familiar with. And they can be broken down even farther. But one is the seer. You've read in your Bible and it calls people the seer. The seer is coming. And then another place it may call the same person the prophet. So that's something if you understand. All seers are prophets, but not all prophets are seers. It's really important to get that. A seer, in its simplest term, is one who gazes in vision. It's one who gazes in vision. A nabi, so we could say it's the seer prophet, is one who gazes in vision, or we could say the nabi type prophet. And that means to bubble up, to burst forth and flow. So that's, that's my comfort zone. I have no clue what I'm saying. I can start in the intercession or I can get a microphone and just start letting it roll and it just bubbles up. I, that's my comfort zone right there. Um, many times I'll see something and it'll be my springboard, but it's my springboard into the prophetic flow. I rarely ever see something set on it and just minister from that. So when I see something, it is a springboard. It's a launching. It's like, great, now I'm ready to roll with something. And I don't know what that is until I literally begin to open my mouth. Or I may write down a couple of like lines or a couple of words that, that are my springboards. But I, I may say, you know, I believe the Lord's saying, and it just, that's the flow. That's the knobby. It's the inspirational. It's the audible flowing. So this little note right here, which is really good, there are times when you're you're bubbling up, but you're not yet in a flow. And that's really true. Um, you'll, you'll get in that. When I was beginning to prophesy more and more, um, when I would be in a flow, but I knew there was more, but I, I couldn't get it out, I would just begin to pray in the Spirit real quietly. You know, and I would stay in the flow of the Spirit, but I was really learning to flow. And we're going to do some prophetic exercises with this Nobby type later, but I'm going to say, you know, prophesy for 15 seconds concerning family. And you're going to start that flood. I'm going to say, stop now, go 15 seconds concerning something else, another aspect. And we're going to do this for classes 5 and 6. So you're going to be more comfortable in that flow by then. But it's to show you that you, by faith, you can open up and flow. So remember those two words. Just a couple of times these are used. Deuteronomy 34.10 Since that time no prophet, no nabi, has risen in Israel like Moses whom the Lord knew face to face. That's one time that word used. It's used many times. I just want to give you a few examples. Uh, Exodus 7.1 The Lord said to Moses, See, I make you as God to Pharaoh and your brother Aaron shall be your prophet, shall be your nabi. Jeremiah 1, 4 and 5 now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you a prophet, a nabi, to the nations. And then Malachi 4, 5. Behold, I am going to send you Elijah the prophet, the nabi, the one who bubbles up and springs forth before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. That's a few times that's used. Seer is one who gazes in a vision. And there's two words that are translated seer in our English Bible. How do I say it, Andrew? Ra'ah. Ra -ah. So one of them is Ra'ah, and the other is what? I just want to say chosen, but that works too. <laughs> Ra'ah, to see, shows a, to look upon, to perceive as a stargazer. It's literally... Like you look at someone that's just like zoned out in a daydream. That's what that would represent. Now, the difference is the source. Okay, One is God zoning you out. You know, you're in a room, but you're not there. You're looking at something else. That's what this word is talking about. To see literally could mean the, the ra'ah, to see something standing there that other people can't see. You see it. You know it's there. Okay? So... Of myself too much here. Um, let's go to the next one. First Chronicles 29, 29. Now the Acts of King David from the first to the last were written in the Chronicles of Samuel, the seer. The Chronicles of Nathan, the prophet. The Chronicles of Gad, the seer. That's where all three of those words are used in one verse. Samuel, the seer, 
the one who literally means to see. So he can just he can see these things. I had a a guy who was really really close to first guy I ever cast demons out of literally. He was a seer. He and I would sit in a service together. I knew he saw. I knew I could tell you. I mean, we we used to play literally like. I don't mean like play games and devalue this, but we used to, I guess, exercise the gift, learning to grow together. I would write something down. Like, I knew there was an angel over here in this corner. I could write the color. I could write. But I couldn't see it. I knew it. It was. I knew it. So I would be like, I see something and know where it is. Or I, I know something and know where it is. And he would write it down. And he could see it. I would know it. He could see it. That was when I first learned to walk with somebody like that. I mean, there's one time I was praying for a guy. And we were we were in an altar and doing deliverance. And I was praying. And I ran, went around to his back. And I swiped my hands down his back. And I said, I removed those marks. You know, it was like satanic targets. I removed those. And he goes, did you see those? And no, I didn't see them. And I knew they were there. So there's, there's one that's the seer. That was my buddy. And then there's one that just bubbles forth that gets these. You know them. There's a difference there. And I used to beat myself up because I don't see this. I don't see that. It's just how God works. Some people see. Some people will know. Now it wasn't for me to, me or him, to get up and start prophesying these things out. But that's what I'm talking about. Giftings are resident within you. The ability to hear, to see, to know. These are things that are resonant. You're going to find what giftings really flow in your life well. And if you will begin to develop those giftings and exercise those giftings, it will just be normal, a part of who you are. I've taught in sometimes on gifts, when you first start to engage them, they're like tools on your tool belt. But there's a whole other level of that when they become assimilated into your life. Okay, maybe you have prophesied a lot or you haven't, but we're going to go out at some point in between weeks and I'm going to encourage you to prophesy to a couple of people. You're going to go out, if you've not been doing this, it's going to be on your tool belt and you're going to have to actually pull it out and use it. But the more you pull it out and use it, it's going to become who you are. It's no longer going to be on tool belt. It's going to be assimilated into your life. So it's not I go do this. It's where I am. This is normal. So, am I making sense to you guys? Yeah. I know I'm teaching this a lot of information, but you got to understand some of this. So, this is the one verse where all three of those words are using, used together. All of them are prophets, but they're different giftings. So let's kind of contrast these two just a little bit. So the Nabi is really activated by faith, a spontaneous activation. If you guys come here, you know, sometimes we hit intercession and I'll start prophesying. Mm -hmm. I didn't come in that day carrying a prophecy. It's just in that moment, faith came and released a word. Now a seer is going to be generally very presence driven. I'm not saying the Nabi is not valuing presence. Don't hear it that way. But a seer is one that is just really sensitive and it's in his presence most of the time when they're really opened up and see these things. And they may sit on these things for weeks and months on end getting more insight and getting more insight and getting more insight. That's a different way the prophetic operates in the one who sees very present, activated, dream, visionary capacity, a lot of depth to it. It's not where the Nabi gets up and prophesies it out and you can record it word for word and you judge it, right? You know, it's there. Where the, the seer is not going to give you that word for word from God. They're going to paint you a picture of what they see and share with you the interpretation that's been cultivated in the presence of God. But it's not a word-for-word -word judging. It's an overall concept that's being released. So the Nabi is, is more inspirational, audible, hearing, speaking. It's just thrusting it forth. 
But the seer, for example, if you've got a seer, and they may minister very similar as far as what you see. Like if someone's ministering up here, what you see, it may look very similar. But it's sourced very differently. Same source, different gifting. So if you've got a, a, um, a seer that's coming in doing a healing service, they're coming in probably having seen um, visions of sick people, what they're wearing, what their hair is like, where they're going to be sitting. They see this picture. So they're walking in. They're looking for that. When they see that, boom, they know it's time. Because they've already saw that. Where a Navi prophet that's coming in or a minister that's coming in, they may be right in the middle of, of something to go, boom, and just start releasing something. It's very spontaneous. It's very, you know, they, they didn't see it before. And that's why I have a lady two weeks ago that was blind. You know, it's just, boom, I saw that. A seer would have probably saw her three weeks ago when he was praying about that service. But when they saw it, boom, faith is active. Two recent, once we're still going, but streams in the body of Christ. Bob Jones, who's well recognized, was a seer. Um, I'm not as familiar with him. I've read lots of things about him. But I'm more familiar with Bill Ham. He's more of a knobby type flow, spontaneous prophesying decree type ministry. But these are two that has been extremely influential in the body of Christ in activating the prophetic. But they come from two really different streams, which is really powerful. One's not better than another. That's the thing. We have to understand how they flow. Uh, there was a time when, when I'm doing prophetic that, you know, I saw how other people deliver, so I'm like, I want to deliver that way. It just messed me all up because I, I'm not gifted that way. You know, I, like, I was trying to talk through what I got. You know, does this make sense to use this? You know, what about this? And I just, I don't deliver that way well. I'm just, let's open my mouth and it's either wrong or right type of a flow. Um, but that's why when you've got to understand your gifting, stay in your lane because you're going to be the best there. You're not going to be great over there. You might be okay over there. But understand your giftings and learn to develop them. And the reason I'm telling you this, I'm not saying anybody in here is called as a seer or a Navi prophet. What I'm trying to bring out is the way you receive. Some of you will lean more one way than the other. Doesn't mean you're not going to see things. I still see things. I have encounters. Um, but it's not my main primary flow. So y'all saw this a couple weeks ago when we did the prophetic. But there's, we're going to walk through these four areas as we develop some of this. One is personal hearing, and that is John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice. Okay? That's every believer in the body of Christ can hear his voice. That is not for... The exceptional person. That is not for the person without sin. That is, that is every believer has faith in Christ and hear His voice. To the level in which you hear His voice is simply the level of pursuit, growth, training that you develop in your life. So we'll go from there and we'll start walking into giftings the different revelatory giftings. Because word of knowledge, in one prophetic flow, you can hit so many different revelatory gifts. So we're not going to focus so much on what is this gift, what is that gift, when did this one come out. First, we want to just be able to engage in the flow. And then we will learn. This part, this is actually word of knowledge. Many times if you are opening a prophetic flow, and your prophetic ministers don't do this stuff by accident. They know how to prophesy. They, they become skillful in using their gifting. So many times if a prophet or a mature person calls you out, they're going to talk about something in your past. Because that is word of knowledge. When, when the person receiving, someone speaks something in their past or present, what they're actually going through, it ignites faith. So they're going to speak to your past or your present, and then they're going to shift over into prophesying into your future. If, if they just come up, and it's not wrong either way, but if they just come up and start prophesying into your future, you have no gauge. But if they start here, 
in your past come into your present and then deliver into your future. Your faith has been built up more and more to believe in what's being released. We'll talk about the different ways. It's not just introductory. That's why I'm giving you the stuff this way. We'll talk about... I've heard uh, many people that's very prophetic pray their prophecy. Now there's a time for that. It's usually in a cessationist church. Okay? You want to release what you can release without getting them to choke on how you deliver it. But there is a time to stop praying your prophecy and stand and deliver the word. Okay? If I'm getting, if someone is praying over me and I, I'm like, this is prophetic, I'm left with a little bit of confusion here. Are you praying or are you prophesying? So I really like to know, and I, I, I try, not always, draw that distinction. Now many times you may start praying for someone, but then you've got to have some type of distinction where they know you're prophesying. Because it levels up the engagement. It levels up the, uh, the faith, if you will. Okay, It takes a different level to faith to prophesy than it does to pray it. So we want to work through some of this. So we'll go from personal hearing, we'll move into the giftings, and then we'll settle on the gift of prophecy some. And 1 Corinthians 14, 31, for you can all prophesy one by one. The Scripture's given everybody permission. You may all prophesy one by one. So we're going to do that. We're going to believe that word and we're going to prophesy. And then how they operate in the fivefold gifts and then in the office of the prophet. Now, the spirit of prophecy, really you could say it blankets all of this, but I like to teach that it's the atmosphere that's created. Okay? Um, when Saul came among the prophets, it said he prophesied and was changed into another man. Okay? What happened? He was the same guy, but when he stepped around those that had faith and maturity in their calling, it become easier for him to prophesy than to remain silent. And it was so such a distinct difference in his life that Scripture says he looks like another man. Okay, that's the power of what we can say, the spirit of prophecy, which is the spirit of Christ, Holy Spirit. Um, or we could also say the culture that is created, the hosting of the presence of God. Uh, we had people in here, what, Sunday night that was prophesying on team that had never done that before and not been trained. But they're like, it's just flowed out of me. Well, yeah, that's because there's faith in the room, expectation, and a culture that is being cultivated that makes it much easier to prophesy. So, all right. So we're going to move into our, our activation. And I'm going to try to take us to 8.15, 8.30 at the latest on our Thursday nights. Um, I know some of you guys, a handful of you guys, we've done this before. And uh, if anybody's read Mark Verkler, Four Keys to Hearing God, it's phenomenal. And that's what we want to do. Um, we're going to write, uh, write God's letter back to us if you guys know what that is. So Habakkuk 2, 1 and 2. I will stand on my guard post and station myself on the rampart. I'll keep watch to see what he will speak to me and how I may reply when I'm reproved. Then the Lord answered me and said, Record the vision and inscribe it on tablets that those who read it may run. So these four keys are simply this. Stillness. Being quiet, restful, peaceful. Vision. Spontaneity and right. I'm going to give you a couple of keys here. And I really want you to, to begin to take note because we're going to do these four things here in just a few minutes. We're going to get quiet and we're going to ask the Lord to give us His love letter to us. Okay? Stillness, quiet yourself. That's just getting rid of all the nerves. We all know what that is. We all go around we're running all day long. But, I mean, sometimes it takes you 30 minutes, 40 minutes just to get quiet and still. 
But we're not going to take that long on our letter. We're going to let you continue it at home. But my point is, it's important. A while back, I was sitting with the Lord, and uh, Andrea said I can get stressed sometimes. Uh, I can. I feel it climbing up my neck at times. I'm a seer. Yes. Yeah, um, but literally, the, the, as I was sitting there with the Lord, saying, Lord, I've got to learn to chill, took me to like the mouth of a cave. And I'm sitting there and I'm watching this vision begin to unfold. He said, at any time, you can come to this place. And this is a place that houses many treasures for you. And I'm sitting there at the mouth of this cave, of course in vision, and there's a chair there. And literally, I just feel the nudge of the Lord to sit. It says, before you can enter into these treasures, I've got to teach you to relax. So I just sat there. While I'm watching myself in this moment, sitting in the chair, tears just begin running down my face. And I literally just feel like my shoulders just starting to relax. And the Lord says, you just sit here. That's long enough that you can just walk gently into the things I have for you. So I just sat there. Wasn't anything going on? Because to me, there's always something going on in my mind, in my life. When I'm sitting still, I'm thinking of how we're developing something. It's a gift. And... Many times, I mean, some of you guys might get so opened up into prophetic, you've got to learn to shut it off. Literally. It's really important to learn to shut it off. When I started really flowing in the prophetic, it messed up my preaching really bad. Because I'm up here and it's like, bing, 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 bing. You know, it's like, okay, i got to balance this out. You know, I've got to figure out, can I prophesy here for a while or... And then I had to learn to shut it off and be able to focus. So just like faith can activate it, faith can pause it. If somebody tells you they can't, they're just, they're just lying to you. They're not matured enough in that yet. You can shut things down, but it does take effort. And that's what the Lord was teaching me. That's all, it's all about strategy. So I'm a thinker. I love, I love just processing through and trying to figure these things out, but it's not trying to figure out in a stressful way, but it's just, I'm, I run a lot in my mind. So the Lord's like, you got to learn to sit in peace and shut those things off for a while because there's things in here that you need to look at and learn you don't have to strategize with. There's new tools in here, but you don't have to think how it's going to fit in the big picture. You can just play with them for a little while because he was being very relational with me. So now, when I get time, I can go literally back to that place. And I know when I walk in that cave and vision that there is something fresh and exciting. Mm -hmm. See, we were taught years ago in church, oh, set your clock, go pray for 20 minutes and just ramble. You know, if you don't make a 20-minute clock, you about backslid because you got to get 30 next week, you know. And then... Then six weeks later, you're going, oh, God, forgive me. I don't even want to pray anymore. <laughs> but when you're able to sit down, quiet yourself, and step into encounter with the Holy Spirit, you can't wait to go back. You see, the difference, one, is just condemnation and from the pit of hell, and the other is relational, and it's exciting, and it's vibrant, because the Holy Spirit is meeting you there every single time. That's the real secret place. It's the real secret place. Psalm 4610, surrender your anxiety, be silent, and stop your striving, and you will see that I am God. And literally, you will see, you will know. You will become intimately involved with me. That's what he's saying. So here in just a few minutes, we'll put some music on. I want you to take out your notes, and I want you just to begin to be still for step number one. I love these teachers laid out. <laughs> Two, three, four of you. So when we do that, you want to fix your eyes on the Lord. Now a lot of times people will begin to choke on this part. And I don't want you to choke on this part. If, if I tell you this morning, Andrew and I was up on the river, 
And I got out of bed and had a cup of coffee, and I went out there, and I sat there. Did y'all see that picture? Um, pretty little river there. Um, so I was just standing there at this, this rail and had my coffee cup. I just kind of leaned on it, and I was just watching that water flow. And I was just thanking God for the flow that he's going to release in town. You know, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. The fog was out there just a little bit on the river. Now, can y'all see that as I described that part? I mean, you can see that, right? That's not ungodly to see that. Okay? If we talk about Jesus going up to the woman at the well, you know, give me something to drink. Can you see him walking up to a well and asking her something to drink? Of course. It's your imagination. I'm not saying you're saying this is God giving you that vision. That's your imagination. He gave you your imagination. You get to use your imagination how you want to use it because it's yours. Your imagination is just the screen. It's not good or it's not bad. It's all how it's used. So when I read through a scripture, it's one thing when, I, one thing when I'm studying. I'm going all into context and everything. It's another thing when I'm just reading to read. Okay. So if I get to a place that's really painting a picture, I may stop. And I'm going to take the information that I learned by just reading that, and I'm going to paint it on my imagination that's neither good nor bad. I'm going to use the tool God's gave me, and I'm going to look in there. Now, from there, as I'm sitting there seeing this, I'm going to ask, or I'm going to invite Jesus. Where I'm going to say, Holy Spirit, would you like to take this somewhere? Faith, I've, I've set a stage for him to engage with me in my imagination. <clears throat> and you will be amazed at how quick that may transform and you are somewhere else with the Lord. I was, we were, Hope was with me, Tiffany, Andrea, we were in Haiti and we were doing this, this literally the same training. And uh, one of those days I went up to my room while they were eating. And I was sitting up in my room and I had my computer out and I was reading my Bible. I had my notes out and I was journaling some stuff. And Psalm 119, you know, your word is a lamp under my feet and a light under my path. <clears throat> so I was just kind of fixated on that scripture. And I literally said to myself, I'm processing, I'm going to stop, and I'm just going to meditate on that scripture. And as I sat there, <coughs> I began to see a trail. I was standing in a trail. And this is the scene that was painted. I was standing in a trail, and it was kind of jungly, and I could tell I was up on a mountain, and there was something out there. So I started walking, and then I started kind of jogging. And I looked back behind me, and... Each footstep was leaving a print, and it was apostolic, prophetic. And as I went on, and I would continue just to stop and look back, they were bursting into flames. So as I continue running, I run right up to the edge of the hill, and I could see the city down there. And the city it was like Caribbean type colors. I mean, it was blues and turquoise and yellows and reds. It was really pretty. And I watched this city rise up off the ground. And literally fold like a book. Like all the sides folded in and went right in my heart. And as soon as it did, I cried out my mouth, the knobby type, spontaneous, Cartagena, Colombia, go there. Yeah, it's her fault. She's been praying for me. So... Of course, I, when I came out, of, I mean, I was crying. I went into intercession after that. I was just crying out to the Lord. Um, and then I got up and I wrote all this down. And we're just praying into it with counsel and stuff right now. <coughs> I've been to Columbia before. But all that started because I took a neutral imagination, a tool, just like my hand. It's no different than my hand. I use my hand for good. You can use my hand for bad. My imagination is the same way, so is yours. It can be used for good or bad. All I did was stop reading on Psalm 119. I said, well, I'm going to focus on this for a minute. And I allowed vision to emerge. Okay? 
When I stopped to focus on it, that was my doing. When the vision began to emerge, that was his doing. That was the Holy Spirit activated. If I imagine myself sitting down on a rock by the river, relaxing, that's my doing. But when I say, Lord, would you like to join me? And then I watch him walk in to that scene that I said and give him permission to take it where he wants to go. Then it becomes his. Then he's becoming the source. I'm initiating. He's the source. I went up to my room that day and opened my computer and began to read. I initiated. I paused on that and said, I want to meditate. I want to think on that scripture. And I saw myself standing on a trail. But then the Holy Spirit took over. And now it's possibly opening up a whole new dimension of our ministry. From one little thing like that. So you start, fix your eyes on the Lord. Set something in your imagination that's godly. Okay? Ephesians 1.17 I pray that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, would impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation, to know Him through your deepening intimacy with Him. I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of His calling. You can see that progress in that apostolic prayer right there. Illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding with light, God is light, until you experience. You set the stage. Invite Him to take over, and you step into experience with Him. That's where you want to go. And He will take you. Now, you might get where you can sit down in three minutes, you're having an encounter with the Lord, tears running down your face, you're on your knees. You might sit there in 30 minutes. Just engage your faith. Paint the picture. Invite Him in. So number one, steal yourself. Just be quiet. Number two, activate your imagination. Think of a biblical scene. Think of being out in the field, wherever. Find the place. It's your imagination. And then invite the Holy Spirit, the Lord in, to take it where He wants to go. You may start by asking Him a question. Lord, would you reveal your love to me today? Lord, what would you want to say to me right now? Lord, my heart's this way. What would you say to my heart? I usually start by asking him a question. And then I'll just write out the response if I'm able to write. And I'll just start writing. Number three, this is that start writing thought. Hearing spontaneous thoughts. What does God's voice sound like? Is it the booming, Hello, this is God. It's not. It really sounds like you or me. When he's angry, sometimes it sounds like angry. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. You're so sweet. <laughs> Hearing spontaneous <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> flowing thoughts. Loving thoughts. New covenant realities. Um, this is that. <laughs> I'm going away to my chair for the day. <laughs>